All right, so we're talking about women's status in China. You've done a handful of activities now, um, kind of going over the status and whether it's good or bad. And so you've come across a few things, right? Um, if we're looking at a timeline, this is year zero. Um, Confucius existed, and we know that women's status was very bad when Confucius existed. We know this because of the quotes that you just read. Um, and then after Confucius was alive, year zero, there's a handful of dynasties um, that you learned about um, with Ms. Pat last year. But then we jumped to the Han Dynasty, and we know that women were not treated correctly um, and had a low status in the Han Dynasty. Then came the Tang Dynasty, um, and we know that women were treated very well during the Tang Dynasty. Um, we know this because of Empress Wu. Uh, and then the Song Dynasty, and we know they were treated poorly yet again. And then the Ming Dynasty treated poorly yet again. Um, the reason why we want to go over this is not only because this is a girls' school and it's pretty um, good to know about you know women's status in other countries, um, but also the book that we're going to read, um, Bound. The main character uh, you're going to see she's a she's a young girl, um, and women just don't have this equal status, um, and that's going to be one of her struggles that she's going to go through. So the way I like to think about um, women's status in Chinese history is kind of like a roller coaster, right? Uh, we start off with the Han Dynasty and before, um, and here we can see um, typical Han artwork. Um, typical Han artwork, as you can see, depicts who. Um, you can see here that these are both men, right? Um, and there are very little women who are actually depicted in the Han Dynasty or before. Um, again, because women were not valued, and so artists never took time to say, hey, I'm going to paint a picture of a woman, because it was always the men that were valued in society. And we again know this because of Confucius and because of the quotes that you just read, you know, um, things like, a woman's role is in the house, right? A woman's greatest duty is to produce a son. Um, women actually produce disorder. Um, women should be followers, not leaders. Okay, and this was very much the, um, the the way society was. And then we know the Tang Dynasty came around, and we know that Empress Wu came and kind of changed things up. And whether you believed that she was a good person or a bad person or a good leader or a bad leader, um, she very much promoted women during this time. And we know she took the rule over um, from her son. And you know, if it was kind of like an election, like a demo democracy, um, she probably wouldn't have been elected. But because it was all about power, she was able to eliminate her enemies, um, obviously by killing them, and she was able to secure it for herself. And while in there, we know that she really promoted women's rights, and we know that, again, by looking at um, Tang artwork. As you can see here, right, we've got a woman riding regular on her, her horse. She's mid-stride. You can tell she's really going all out. She's not daintily riding it. She's got cowboy boots. She's got pants on. Um, by ex examining this artwork, we can really see um, that women were seen as equals, and they were allowed to be outdoors in society. Um, and this was a very positive time for them. However, this positive time is very short-lived. Um, and in the Song and Ming dynasties, and we could even argue even still today, um, women are going to lose this value, this e uh, equality that they once had under the Tang dynasty. And that's because this idea of Neo-Confucianism comes about. Um, the word Neo literally means new. Okay, and Confucianism is going back to Confucius, right? So what this is referring to is this idea that Confucius's ideas or ideals came back into popularity and still are today. So while he had some really good ideas that we'll learn about later, um, his really bad ideas about women and society also come back into being um, really popular. So... Um, we can see this again in some of the artwork of the Ming Dynasty. Um, here we have a woman, and of course she's seated. Okay, um, you know, the artists did value drawing women. However, you notice that there's a trend. They are always seated, um, and they're always in these elaborate ro uh, robes. And here um, you even have her taking care of her children right? Um, or possibly reading poetry. And then that was pretty much all that they were good for, was um, taking care of a household um, and doing elegant and dainty things, such as reading um, or reciting poetry or maybe doing um, some artwork. 
Um, so again, you can see there's a big change from the Tang Dynasty or Tang Dynasty, right, and how they were pictured into the Ming Dynasty. And again, most of the time they were pictured as being seated because something else happens during the Song Dynasty um, and this idea of Neo Confucianism that we'll learn about next class, and that's this idea of foot binding. Um, this is indeed an adult woman's foot. I won't give away too many details, um, but women's feet became bound. Um, and this was seen as very popular. Um, and it's going to have some important ramifications, not only um, in terms of women's power, um, but women, what women are able to do and how they're going to be seen. So we'll talk more about that la next class. Um, and foot binding, you can tell just by that name alone, um, obviously must have some tie to the book we're going to read, Bound. Foot binding and the title of the book, Bound. I bet you can guess what this book is going to be about.